Have you ever wanted to kill a monster with a Rube Goldberg machine? Look, I didn't say it was a good idea, it's just fun! Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, we all have our favorite weapons in the Monster Hunter games, but sometimes we get so attached to certain parts of our gameplay that we don't mess around with the others. No matter how much time you spend with your main weapon, it is entirely possible to miss out on the deepest details that they have if you don't go out of your way to look for them. And especially if you are trying out a new weapon, there are certain things that you just won't learn in a standard guide type environment. And so today I'm going to show you one obscure trick or neat interaction, one thing that each weapon can do or does that I just rarely if ever see anyone talk about. Unique things that may even be new to people that main said weapon. So strap in, get ready for a wild ride because today is all about surprises. Going in smithy weapon order, of course we're going to start today with Great Sword. In Sunbreak this weapon got a new switch skill called Surge Slash Combo, which changes up your entire playstyle based on one combo that can string together three hits of varying types depending on which button you press. But specifically the Vortex Slash parts of this combo have some interesting hidden abilities. The second hit of the second attack of the Vortex Slash combo has stun value, and so if you use this on the head of a monster repeatedly, you can stun it with a great sword. And secondarily, the third hit of the Vortex Slash combo has hyper armor, negating damage and flinch that hits you when you're using this attack. Yeah, do we really need another one? Longsword has a few moments in its gameplay loop where the weapon will automatically try to sheathe and put you in sheathed state, most notably at the end of Silkbind's Sakura Slash or your Spirit Round Slash combo, the default spirit combo. However, these sheaths can be near instantly cancelled using Sacred Sheath when the animation starts and letting go of the button immediately. This allows you to stay in the fight when your weapon would otherwise choose to sheath. Of course, you can take this even further and use it to pull off a proper Sacred Sheath combo if you're in the right situation as well. And now for something completely different. Well, hello there. If there's one thing that every hunter needs, it's a good meal. So why should you treat yourself any differently? Damn, what a smooth segue. Huge thank you to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. They are a fantastic food ingredient delivery service where you get a box of goodies and the recipes to turn it into, well, delicious meals. And it's really, really cool. I used them myself for years at one point, so I can certainly attest to it. <laughs> Bottom line is, it makes cooking very, very easy. It makes it simple, and it makes it very, very delicious. It takes all of the time and the stress from uh, planning, and just lets you get on with the actual good stuff, which is making good stuff and, you know, eating good stuff, on top of being completely sustainable as well, and that's really, really neat. It is carbon neutral. So if you too want to start eating like a hunter, well, use the link on screen, or go to HelloFresh.com and use the code P-O-G-R-G-V-A-U-G-16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes and 3 surprise gifts. On top of, you know, being lovely, it really would help us out. So, that said then, on with the show. Sword and Shield got a new Silkbind and Sunbreak called Shield Bash. This move carries you an incredible distance in whichever direction that you aim it, meaning that you can aim it forwards to get closer to a monster, or aim it backwards in the middle of a combo to get out of the danger zone when a monster is attacking you. However, if you time it right, you can also use this to parry as the second half of the animation has your shield raised and counts as a guard point, which most notably will trigger the offensive guard skill if it connects with an attack. Usually, offensive guard has a very small window where you can trigger it with a normal guard, but this attack's entire guard window will activate offensive guard, making it a really strong way to use this skill even on a weapon that already could use offensive guard with the Metsu Shoryu Geki Silk Bind. Dual Blade has some somewhat hidden effects that you either may not be aware of or may not be aware of the specifics of, specifically when using Demon Mode and Feral Demon Mode. We all know that both of these modes change up your attack combos and give you access to different movesets entirely from your base dual blades moveset, but did you know that they also boost your element or attack based on which one you're using? Specifically, regular Demon Mode will boost the element or status value of your build entirely by about 33%, and Feral Demon Mode will boost your raw attack value by around 20%. 
Lance gained a switch skill in base rise called Shield Charge. This replaces the base dash attack that the weapon had by default, and with that attack you are vulnerable to attacks while you're charging, where with Shield Charge you are not. What is not immediately obvious about this skill though is that you will guard with it even when the shield isn't in front of your face in the animation. At the very start of this animation there is some wind up before you start running forwards, and during this your shield is at your side instead of in front of you. However, the exact second that you press the button to start a shield charge, you count as blocking forward attacks. Attacks, and so this animation is not totally accurate to its actual ability. Yes, it's safer than walking. For Gunlance, we get into something a bit more interesting in Nice, which is that every shell you fire off does a small amount of fire damage. Extremely small compared to the damage of the shell itself, but it just is a default part of that damage type. It's very tiny percentage fire based. You can see this when shelling monsters with varying fire weakness, but its most interesting use in Sunbreak is in combination with Starburst Bugs. This endemic life, when hit with an elemental damage type, absorbs it, and if you shove a monster into them, they will then have that specific blight applied to them. Normally you need to be using a weapon that does elemental damage on it to do this, or use a beetle from around the map to trigger the bugs. This method is sort of weird as beetles apply the blight anyway, so if you throw a beetle at the bugs, then throw a monster into the bugs, you don't really gain anything, you're just making it more complicated. However, even if you are using a raw damage gun lance, you can make any starburst bugs you come across deal fire blight just by firing a shell at them. Hammer's neat little trick is something that was much more prominent in World and Iceborne, and was actually considered quite strong in those games, but has been forgotten a lot in Rise and Sunbreak simply due to a lack of applicable areas. When you do a jump attack with a hammer when charged, you will retain your charge level. A fully charged jump attack can be instantly comboed into the final big bang hit, a level 2 charged jump attack into the uppercut attack, and so on. This is particularly useful when fighting a monster in a zone with tiny ledges like this one that you can hop off of, as it actually does a load of damage compared to regular fighting while ignoring ledges with hammer. But Sunbreak just has very few zones with ledges at the proper height to use this neat little trick. Hunting Horn gets a little bit funky. A new silkbind this weapon got in Sunbreak is called Sonic Bloom. You place it down on the floor, you play three melodies, and then it will pop for a load of damage. Little known effects are that it also instantly pops from using Magnificent Trio, from using Infernal Melody, or if you put another one down. However, all of these are things that most players are somewhat aware of just from messing with the weapon for extended periods of time. Something you are far less likely to know, however, by accident, is that if you die while a Sonic Bloom is placed, it will explode which can even result in killing a monster by dying yourself. Well, that's one way to do it. For Switch Axe, we actually have a way to wake up sleeping monsters using barrel bombs. Of course, any weapon can use barrel bombs to wake up a monster, and many weapons with counters will use small barrel bombs to trigger their own counter for a sleep wake up, but Switch Axe works in a particularly unique way. With its new silkbind and sunbreak called Elemental Burst Counter, you enter a stance and then hit the right trigger to initiate an attack. If this attack cancels incoming damage, you enter Amped State. If you try to do this with a small barrel bomb, the timing just doesn't line up right at all, but weirdly, you can do this with Mega Barrel Bombs by just hitting them with the counter itself. However, that said, even more uniquely than that, this doesn't work at all unless a monster is present for the attack. If you just use this with bombs, you will counter the bomb and you won't get Power Finisher or the Amped State. It needs to both counter a bomb explosion and hit a monster, making it quite the unique way to wake up a creature. Moving on to Charge Blade, especially in Sunbreak, the gameplay loop of this weapon has cut out a lot of the just general sword gameplay, and so you can be forgiven if you don't know, the third hit of the base sword attack combo ends with a pretty lengthy guard point when the shield is in front of you. Another notable tip here though is that you can actually reach this even faster if you are rolling, as rolling on charge blades gets the first attack of this sword combo, letting you reposition immediately into the second hit and follow that with an attack that again ends with this guard point. Then we go to Insect Glaive. If you use the Diving Wyvern Silkbind with this weapon, you will notice that it does quite a lot of damage, and that damage is fairly consistent if you hit the same body part over and over, but a neat interaction between different silk binds for this weapon is that Diving Wyvern will actually do more damage if you use it immediately after using Silk Bind Vault to fling yourself into the air first. This is a unique combo that reliably does more damage than just using the Silk Bind from the ground, and it's a pretty cool thing that you can do. Light Bowgun and Sunbreak got a new Silk Bind called Counter Shot. This ability in general is just a great evasive maneuver you can use to evade incoming attacks, and it does significantly more damage if the iframes it gives you actually counter an incoming attack, as you may expect. The lesser known part
part of this is that the attack will actually destroy the vast majority of projectiles in the game. Fireballs can be removed from the air, even something as strange as Magnamalo's Hellfire Orbs can be shot down and removed. Of course, this would normally happen with a counter in the sense that you won't take damage from it, but what makes this unique is that if there's any hunters behind you, they also will no longer be hit by it. What you may not expect though is that you cannot destroy any projectile at all that is used by the final boss of Sunbreak. In this fight, neither the rocks that he throws, the orbs of explosive power that he makes in between his hands, or anything else can be destroyed by this attack or removed from the map, making him weirdly uniquely counter one of the main uses of this ability in a way that no other monster in the game does with their similar attacks. Heavy Bogan in this game has also gained a new way to fire cluster ammo, which you can be forgiven if you don't know about as this only applies to a couple of guns in the whole game, which have the ability to fire cluster ammo like regular shots, coming out in a straight line towards the monster and then exploding when they come in contact with them. What is more interesting and unique than that, though, is that this actually interacts with the crouching shot switch skill added in Sunbreak, which you can hold down to fire ammo faster and faster until it overheats. But hilariously, this actually makes you fire cluster ammo slower. For whatever reason, the devs decided that you should be able to use crouching fire with cluster ammo in the level shot type, but it should be absolute garbage because it overheats on the second shot. This literally makes the ammo worse to use with crouching shot than to use without it. It fires slower and it's honestly just really funny to me that this is even possible. It feels almost more like an accident than an intended interaction, but I love that it's a part of the game. And then finally we have the bow. In Sunbreak, the bow got a switch skill to replace their melee attack with a stake that you can stick into a monster's body part to give you bonus damage every time an arrow connects with it. However, you would assume that the stake itself counts as a melee attack, right? Well, the niche thing here is that the close range coding specifically for bow will actually buff your melee attack damage significantly, making your close combat options much stronger. However, for whatever reason, this doesn't apply to the stake attack and doesn't increase the damage of the stake at all, which I guess means that the stake is melee ranged, ranged ammo? Look, it's just a neat interaction, okay? I didn't say it would make you stronger, it's just cool to know about. And that covers it. One unique niche interaction or quirky and obscure trick for every weapon in the game. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of lesser explored mechanics. I hope you've all learned something today, whether it helps you in your usage of your weapon or just made you chuckle a little bit because it's strange and unusual. Of course, use the comment section down below to mention even more of these if you know them so that they can be shared with the world. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye